Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. We are a year-round talk series bringing you the best creative voices across film, television, theater, and entertainment. And I'm so excited today to be joined by Sway Bhatia, who's currently starring in the Mighty Duck series. And I wanted to dive in first by talking about your audition for the show, because you know you very frequently are doing a lot of self-tape auditions, but this was one of a handful of auditions that was actually in person. So what is it that you really love getting the opportunity to do in person in the room? when you have the chance to try out a few more different things and get that feedback? Honestly, it's definitely such a different experience. Getting to be in person with real people yeah. is super helpful and getting to have a, a rear that's, you know, like an actor and, and they're really in their character and you get to read with them. It's it's definitely a different experience. And I find being in person very helpful. And, and I was honored that I get to got to do that for this role. Um, it, it was definitely helpful. <laughs> And you originally auditioned for a different role in the series. Did you feel like that actually gave you a little bit more information about what the show was going to be by getting to read different character sides? So for um, my first audition, I actually got the script my first time, which was very helpful. So when I read the first episode, I saw the role of Sophie and I was like, haha, who is that girl? Seems like uh, she's very similar to me. That's cool. Because I saw her as an Indian girl. I'm like, I'm an Indian girl. And then I, I was reading my character description that I got my original character for. I was like, okay, I um, I can play her, but I feel like I'm more like this other character. But as soon as I got in my first audition, they told me right away, they were like, you did so well, but we'll bring you in next week for Sophie. I'm like, okay, that's cool. That makes sense. Awesome. Um, and then I went in for the role of Sophie and, and you know, it felt really good getting to play her. I think she was a, a great fit for me. She was like the perfect size shoe almost. Um, uh, it was really great getting to play her. That's so amazing. I love when it happens that way. And then once you landed the role before you went into production on the show, how do you like to prepare and particularly for a character like Sophie, you have some of those details in the script, but there's obviously a lot to fill out between that. So do you like to create a lot of backstory or, or what's your process with all of that? Yeah, I think my character has um, so many layers to her personality, which is almost like you have to practice so many different things and learn so many different things about her. And it's not that you only learn her character description and what she's like, but you understand her background and, and who her parents are and what they're like. And, and if she has any siblings and her whole family, you have to understand like everything about her and where she's been throughout her life. Because we pretty much only know her as the 12 year old she is, not as her as like a three or five year old or we didn't know her from those years so I almost have to interpret the uh, interpretate those things from what I know about her which is um it's definitely a challenge because she's um she's a funky character because she has so many different sides to her so it's like how was she when she was younger how is she different now um but something I definitely did right away was practice my ice skating because uh, when I found out she was a strong hockey player I was like I gotta get right back on the ice and um, I practiced my figure skating and it was great to be back on the ice um, lots of great memories um, which was which was amazing and um, uh, that was the main thing I definitely practiced for her but um, just to understand how to become such a such a fierce and, and um, diverse character like her it must have been so useful that you had that experience already figure skating but obviously hockey skating is very different in terms of what the technique is so when you went back on the ice and started kind of revisiting figure skating how how is it different than having to translate that to hockey and, and what that required in terms of skills and technicalities yeah so when I, when I first booked the role they, they knew that I was a figure skater so they knew I'd have a little bit of an advantage being a strong hockey player so uh, we had two weeks of training as soon as we got to Feb uh, to Vancouver in February of 2020 um, but I got there with my figure skates on and they were like that's not right um, so <laughs> they had to wait a few days to get me my hockey skates because you know you have to fit it and mold it and all like that because you can't just like have any skates they have to fit you properly uh, for a show like this um, so, you know, I got on my figure skates and it felt good to be back on the ice and um, I was in my figure skates for about two days and then I finally got my hockey skates and it took me about like two hours to get used to it because it's such a different blade and stopping is different and sometimes the skating technique is different, but thank God we have NHL players teaching us so um, 
That was definitely helpful. Um, but I think everybody learned really well. A lot of uh, the cast members didn't know how to skate at all before, but they learned so quickly. And I'd like to say I got used to the hockey uh, pretty well. So um, uh, it, in fact, on my last day of set or, or one of the last few days of set, uh, they got me back my figure skates and I, I got back in them and it felt really good. Um, so um, I'm glad that I have both of the sides now so I can kind of pick and choose which one I feel like I'm doing. Um, but I, I want to get back on the ice pretty soon. It's going to be exciting. That's amazing. Did, did the NHL players that were helping you train at the beginning, did they continue to work with you throughout the season, particularly in terms of, okay, this is the game that they're playing. This is the approach. This is, this is what your character needs to do. This is the pass she's going to get. This is the move she's going to make. Yeah, they were there throughout the whole filming. So they were choreographing some of the scenes as well because there was lots and lots of hockey shots and they um, they choreographed all of that, like where, what position we're at and what type of skating we're doing or what shot it is. So they were there on set uh, on all the hockey scenes, um, which is a lot of the show. Um, but it was great to have them as a supportive uh, as supportive people throughout the entire show and we've created close bonds and um it was definitely sad um getting back home and being like oh i don't have my nhl teachers anymore um, but uh it, we definitely bonded really well and they, they taught us all how to play hockey which was amazing and we'd always play fun games with them we played games like star wars where they throw pucks at you and you have to like kind of dodge them and like jump over them which um but they really trained us really well and i think we all became great hockey players and you can see us progress throughout because we we practice during those hockey scenes as well. And one of the things about Sophie is it's not just that she's really good at hockey, it's that she's really passionate about it. And it's something that she really absolutely loves. Did you, you know, kind of going back to that backstory and all the places where you were filling in a lot of details with her, did you think about, okay, like when did she first start playing hockey? When was the first time she went on the ice? What is it specifically that she loves about this so much? Yeah, I think I understood her whole background about being on the Mighty Ducks team because, um, as you as you see the show especially you can even see it in the first episode how it's like okay so she does enjoy this sport but you can see the pressure that her parents are giving her because she even talks about it she's like oh really what about my parents uh what about this you know they want me to win you know they want me to get a pluses um so she has that pressure as much as she loves her passion for hockey is that she wants to do it for fun almost um She'd love to become a professional hockey player, but she's not all about winning. She does the sport because she loves the sport, not because her parents force her to, but um, she's not like a big fan of the Mighty Ducks team because they're so rude and mean and they're almost like bullies. Um, but uh, she, she's a great player and, and there's nothing she can do about that. She's just talented and, and she's she's holding that talent. So, um, I mean, that's a, so amazing about her is that she has this pressure, but but it would it would have been easier for her to leave if she wasn't as good but she can't complain about that and and she's sorry that she's so good <laughs> and did you, you know, with that idea of all the pressure that's on her, did you think about, okay, what would her day to day be like? Because there's, there's a lot of mention, like you said, in that first episode about 6am trainings and a lot of the parents bringing, you know, physical therapists and actual professional hockey coaches to the practice and, and how it's it's almost reached this point where it's been taken too seriously. So did you think about specifically for Sophie and have conversations about, okay, what are the actual things that her parents do to really enforce this professionally? Yeah, her parents are definitely one of those uh, um, parents for sure. They do like those hockey camps and they have like the college counselors already. Uh, you can see that she uh, talks about it, her parents talk about it in the first episode about her going to Harvard and all. And um, honestly, I find that pretty crazy, but um, that's her, I guess. Um, she, she's a smart person. So again, she can't do anything about that either. Um, but it was cool kind of getting to play like a smart athletic girl and um, getting to feel what it's like to be a girl who's expected to go to Harvard and like already getting co college counselors and, and all the honors classes and... Um, you know, all these hockey camps and, and intense training that she goes through because we have those practice scenes where it is intense training from our scary coach who is played by Dylan Playfair, who's such a sweet guy in real life. Um, but it's, it's really fun getting to see the uh, people who play the hockey players um, do their work because they're, they're uh, hockey players in real life as well. So watching them uh, do the scenes for those hockey shots, it's so cool watching all the fast movements and the, and the crazy exercises that um, the coach makes us do. But um, it's fun to do that stuff. Yeah. 
you know, you were mentioning, obviously, the coach on the Mighty Ducks team at the beginning of the of the first episode, you know, is very intense. And he's the one who actually drives a lot of it as well and like creates such a high bar of expectation. Um, and how did you all think about what the dynamic of that team was? Because there's also the thing where, uh, you know, when Evan then is no longer on the team, that nobody even talks to him. So people that he thought were his friends aren't really. And, and that's part of who this team is. So how did you all figure out that group dynamic and, and what that relationship was amongst the team honestly I feel like Sophie wasn't part of that because you can see in that table how her face isn't really like laughing at all that because they're all like oh don't bother sir you don't bother sir and you can see she's just like really not part of any of that and she has those scenes with Evan where she's like yeah look I'm really sorry about this I miss you on the team and I'm like you were the only nice person um uh, I think she's again like she's forced to be on that team almost and she doesn't really want to be on it she wants to join evan's team but she does she just doesn't know how to ask her parents she's a little afraid of her parents because she knows they have so high expectations for her and um as much as you know she, she really does love hockey but but she doesn't want to be part of that bully group where she has to be mean to people that she does enjoy being with um so so she she's kind of like whoa that was mean guys why do you guys do that um but she definitely tries to be nice but she doesn't want to be like so nice in front of everybody else because then they're gonna be because she wants to be part of this group uh because you know she's almost a popular kid but she almost doesn't inside so she doesn't really know how to show that yet but um we'll see throughout the show if she does or if she doesn't i don't want to say too much and so much of the show overall, you know, is based around this new team that Evan starts and the whole idea of like, they don't know what they're doing yet. They're a little scrappy, but they're going to figure it out. And there's so much heart to it. And it's really just about that camaraderie and that friendship and having fun together. And so given that that's really the overarching theme of the show about working together and having fun, how did that translate to the way that you and all of the rest of the cast, because it's such a great ensemble cast, like how you all worked together and the type of camaraderie that you all had and the attitude that everybody came in with just wanting to have fun making the show. Yeah, I think we had that two weeks of bonding for that two weeks of hockey training. And then it was it was almost like hard and sad, kind of kind of me being on the other team and everybody else being on that other team because they they were all together and I was just like this outsider almost. I was like, no, but I want to be with you guys. So it was like my almost real feeling as well. It's like I want to hang out with you guys, but I can't and my character can't either. Um, but I think that was a hard experience as well. Um, cause we got so close and then me having to be like, I don't know who you guys are. Um, but I only know this Evan kid and he got kicked off. So I don't know who my friends are anymore. She's almost like this loner now. Um, and, uh, but it was, it was, it was great getting close to everybody and then having to play my character who's not, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun experience though, but maybe something happens, maybe not. I don't know. Was it a different experience for you working on this show overall? Because so often when you're on set, you, you know, you're one of a handful of young performers that are on set, whereas this, that's the majority. It's like the adults are outnumbered by all of you. So was it a different dynamic and a different experience because of that? Yeah, because when, when I was on, you know, on Succession and Masters of None, it was really only me and the guy who played my brother. So um, being in a whole environment where you're just with adults, but so talented actors who I'm so inspired by, um, uh, and then getting on this where I'm like with so many people that are around my age, it, it's a fun experience, honestly, because you get to, you know, relate to them. Uh, we get to you know, hang out sometimes and uh, we just become like an offset family. And, and even Emilio and Lauren, they love that they, they they're they have really young hearts and that's what's so amazing about them they they have conversations with us all the time and um they're always part of our little kid group talks um but it's really special getting to have this whole kid family we all became like siblings and um it, it was really amazing getting to bond with other kids because that's something different than what i do especially but what, when i'm on theater and i do things like the perfect fit i do get to experience that which is amazing um but it was nice getting to work on a in front of a camera with people that were my age. 
I also wanted to ask you about your music because you've done so many great things, whether it's being in a theater performance like The Perfect Fit, um, but also you do a lot of your own performances and, and mashups and, and rap reinterpretations of songs. Like I really love the one that you did from The Greatest Showman, This Is Me, where you turned it into a rap song or, you know, even you've got that great video where you just did a mashup of like Spice Girls Wannabe and Vogue and found the way that the two musical stylings came together. And I think that's such an incredible talent and skill to be able to take songs and break them down and restructure that musical arrangement. So when you're doing those, what does that look like as you start to figure out how you can create an entirely different sound to a song that everybody knows so well already? Yeah, that's something I definitely really enjoy to do because sometimes there's songs that like aren't so appropriate for my age and that, or even if it's appropriate and, and I just can't relate to the words, I always love rewriting songs to have them make sense to myself because um, I love a beat. For example, um, Vogue, there's there's some lyrics that I changed in there and, and This Is Me, I, I just made it a rap because as much as I love singing, it's a pretty hard song. So I was like, I'm just going to make this a rap. Um, and it, it's, it's such a fun a fun thing to do because you have the song that, you know, you, you sing to, but then you have you can make it so that you can jam to it and, and kind of like groove to it. And, and it's a really cool experience that I get to do that. And also I love writing parodies. That's something I really enjoy, getting to add my own personality and my own own writing to a beat and song that I already love. Um, I've done that with a few songs and uh, I like change lyrics sometimes where, well, in the beginning of my rap career, I just like change words to have them, uh, or like I change curse words to songs that, uh, to words that I can say, but like now I fully rewrite songs and, or I, I make like an Ariana Grande song that's like, you know, full on singing and make it like just an entire rap, which um, I, I love doing things like that. Taking songs from my favorite artists and making them my own. I think that's such a special thing. And you mentioned Succession before, and, and that was your first experience in, in creating a character on a TV show and getting the opportunity to keep coming back and revisiting them in subsequent episodes. So how was that a really great learning experience? And what are the things that you learned from that, that then you've been able to carry through to Mighty Ducks in, in playing this character and continuing to develop her in every episode? Yeah, I think what's so special about Succession is that I went from Masters of None where I only worked for two days um, and then getting to really understand the whole experience of working um, continuously and being in different episodes and working with different directors and um, working with award-winning people um, and getting to be now on season three is pretty crazy getting to watch the whole success of that show and, and having Jeremy Strong, who's an Emmy winner, play my dad and, and Brian Cox, who's also an award-winning person, play my grandfather and people like Sarah Snook and Nicholas Braun and Alan Ruck. They're all just so supportive and Kieran Culkin. Um, I, I just love watching their whole acting experience. It's so amazing and, and getting to see people like Jeremy and, and Kieran get in their character as soon as they step on set because it's sometimes especially during the pilot um, when you know Kieran's character is almost like a little bit of a jerk he's a little rude and then he like make like jokes on set that are like really jerky and it would just make everybody crack up but um, they're all such amazing actors and they're so supportive of us and we pretty much grew up on that show so um, they always talk about can you believe you were nine years old when you were in the pilot and now you're like 13 but um, it, it's great working with them um, and getting to grow up on a show like this and, and seeing the successes is, is on honestly just unbelievable and the experiences I get on the show is priceless and getting to be part of, of such a rich family and like a royal family and getting go to weddings at, the, at England Castle and Gloucester and um, f filming at like pools and like being in a helicopter and like the 90th floor on a building or something. It's just these crazy experiences that I got to get on the set that I never thought I'd ever experience in my real life. <laughs> Well, I love that so much and I can't wait to watch all the rest of the episodes of, of Mighty Ducks as, the, as they drop on Disney Plus. Thank you so much, Sway. Thank you. 